genealogies. And for that cause, guess what they did? They said Jesus was born a virgin birth. And Joseph and Mary didn't have no sexual relationship. God just said, come on, Jesus, and you're born. That don't make sense. It don't make sense to me. What it meant was there was a scene brotherhood. And Mary and Joseph was a part of the scene brotherhood. The scene brotherhood was those that was living according to the word of God. And when Jesus was born, he was untouched. The virgin is pure and had been untouched. Islam, inconstancy is powerful in the heart of man. Intemperance sweared it wither it will. Despair and growth is much of it, and fear proclaim it. Behold, I sit unraveled therein, but vanity is beyond them all. Weep not, therefore, at the calamities of the human state. Rather laugh at his follies in the hands of a man addicted to vanity. Life then is but a shadow of a dream. The hero, the most renowned of human character, what is he but the bubble of his weakness? The public is unstable and ungrateful. Why should the man of wisdom endanger himself? For fools, I like to recite the Moist American Prayer at this time. The source from which we draw our strength. The Moist American Prayer, M-A-P, on which is our path back to the great God, Allah. Allah, the Father of the universe. The Father of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Allah is my protector, my guide, and my salvation by night and by day through his holy prophet Drew Ali. Amen. First off, I'd like to rise walking in Jerusalem just like John, giving praise to Allah, the author, the creator, the governor of the world, almighty, eternal, and incomprehensible. The one who stretched forth the heaven with his hands, who have described with his fingers the courses of the stars, who set its bounds to the ocean that it cannot pass, and said to the stormy winds, be still. I'd like to give on to the lady of the valley, the bright and morning star, talking about none other than our holy and delicious prophet, Nova Drew Ali. I'd like to give on to prophet Nova Drew Ali, for so many things. One of the things I would like to give him honor for is to be able to bring us our flag back, the red flag with the five-pointed green star in the center. The same flag that was flying here in the United States when it wasn't even being flown in Morocco because Morocco did not get its independence until March 2nd, 1956 from under the French rule, meaning that that red flag there was flying here in the United States when it wasn't even being flown in Morocco. I want to talk about that flag this evening because the title of my lesson this evening is The Last Supper. You know, when Jesus was with his disciples at the Last Supper, he fed them food for thought. A lot of us thought that they was eating some kind of food. But it was food for thought that he gave his disciples because he was teaching. So this evening, I want to continue the teachings of Jesus and Drew Ali. And as I continue the teachings of Drew Ali, then we will get into this Last Supper. But what I want to do first, I want to read from the Moorish Holy Quran, the book of the seven seals that's talked about in Revelation. And as you look at the back of your 101 questions, 
it says that the Moorish Science Temple of America derives its power and authority from the great Quran of Muhammad to propagate the faith and extend the learnings and truth of the great prophet of Ali in America. And when I looked up the word faith, one of the definitions that I seen was principle. So if you Moorish American live according to love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, you are living that faith of Muhammad, Buddha, and Confucius here in America. So I want to get into this, and what I want to do right now is read from the Moorish Holy Quran. I'm going to read two different chapters in this Moorish Holy Quran this evening. And the first one I want to read is uh, chapter 17. I want to read chapter 17 because when I was at the hospital yesterday talking to my brother Navi Bay, he had told me that the uh, Thompson Bay family had just been there to see him. And in their conversations, they was talking to him about chapter 17 and it said it reminded them of him. And when you look at the 101 questions, question 44, it was talking about Jesus. It said, where did he teach? And it said Jesus taught in India, he taught in Africa, and he taught in Europe. So in chapter 17 of our Moorish Holy Quran, you will see where Jesus was teaching in Europe because he was teaching on a table near Rome. And you know Rome is in Italy, and Italy is in Europe. So in this chapter, Jesus was teaching Claudia and Judith on this table. And he made Claudia and his Judith his ambassadors to Rome. And Jesus told Claudia and Judith, come on with me and walk upon the waves. And people seen Claudia and Judith walking with Jesus upon the waves. But now let's look at verse 24. Verse 24 of chapter 17. And verse 24 reads on this wise. It says, he sent his son Jesus in human flesh to save the world. And uh, as I lifted from the watery grave, I'm going to stop right there. Because in this chapter, it's talking about Jesus, and it's talking about watery grave. And when it's talking about watery grave, it's talking about Claudia and Judith. Because Claudia and Judith were sinking down to death. And Jesus said, come on and walk with me upon the waves. What does that mean, and how can I apply it to myself? Well, when I was living in sin, when I was living according to hatred, slander, lewdness, murder, theft, and everything that harmed, I was sinking down to death. I was sinking down to death, and I was drowning into sin. And Drew Ali said right here, walk with me upon the watery grave. So when I'm sinking down to sin, I'm sinking down to death, I'm living in sin, then that means that I'm in the grave. I'm in a watery grave. This is what it means when it said that Jesus walked on water because when he walked above the things of the world, when he walked above Lucifer, Satan, devil, dragon, and beast, because I had to explain in Sunday school that when you begin to talk about Lucifer, when you begin to talk about Satan, when you begin to talk about the devil, the dragon, and the beast, you're talking about attributes. You know how y'all do have a job? And on your job, all you do is talk about this person that worked with you, talk about that person who worked with you, and everywhere you go, you always got something to say about somebody. You know who you are? You are Lucifer. You are Satan. You are the devil. You are the dragon. And you are the beef. But in this entry, you are the dragon. The dragon is the one, that, the hissing sound. And when he put that venom in you, it go here, there, and everywhere. So when we was taught, that when you look for the angel and the angel have wings or when you look for the devil and the devil have horns, that's ludicrous. That's something to take you off of looking into yourself. So through Jew Ali, the holy prophet that was sent to us by the great God Allah to redeem us from our sinful ways and for us to go back to that state of mind 
of our forefathers' divine and national principle. So when you're sinking down to death, when you're doing things that diametrically opposed to what God say do, then that means you're sinking down to death. You are drowning in the sin. And the only way that we're going to overcome and be one with our Father God Allah is to leave the things of the world alone. Like we say all the time, when you leave this physical plane, it don't mean that you're going to the plane of soul. Moreover, it don't mean that you're going to the spirit plane. Because Drew Ali said, uh, many ages, man would tarry until all his lessons are learned. So until you complete your work down here on this plane of things made manifest, you're going to keep coming back. And that's why so many times I see this brother or I see that sister, I say, that remind me of what you call that remind me of what you call, because that principle is still here. That attribute is here, and it's talking to me, telling me that in order for me to get close to God, we keep talking about unity. Drew Ali said, through common thoughts and words and deeds, man told himself away from Allah, he debased himself. You separate yourself from God when you don't do godly things. And when you one with God, then that means that there are unity between you and God. At this time, I want to read another book. Same book, the Moorish Holy Quran, but I want to read this time from chapter 12. We always talk about that 12-step ladder because when you talk about the 12-step ladder, you're talking about the three. We know mathematics because it come out of Egypt. So when you say the 12, you're talking about the three, because one and two is three. So we're going to read from chapter 12. And it said, Jesus teaches the common people out of spring and tells them how to obtain eternal happiness. And I'm going to read from verses 9 and 10. Verse 9 says, Allah never made a heaven for man. He never made a hell. Say we are creators and make our own. And verse 9 say, 10 say, now cease to seek for heaven in the sky. Just open up the windows of your heart and like a flood of light, a heaven will come and bring a boundless joy. Then toil will be no cruel task. You know how when we pray? When everybody pray, they always look up to the sky. God ain't in the sky. God's in the windows of your heart, in the windows of your mind. You know, the nearest place to meet God is in the heart. And we're not talking about a heart that pumps blood because a bamboo have a heart, and you can put a bamboo, you might be able to put it in a human body. So when we talk about heaven, we're talking about a state of mind. We're talking about a state of bliss. We're talking about the state of love. We're talking about the state of truth, peace, freedom, and justice. That's how you become close to God. Not how many times you might bump your head or hold your hand up. It's coming in the spirit because you meet him in the spirit of truth because man is a spirit and a part of a law. But we get caught up sometimes because we keep saying that we're spirit. We know that we're spirit because it's not in flesh to think and it's not in bones to reason. So if we're spirit and it's not in flesh to think, it's not in bones to reason. Then I ask myself a question, what spirit are you? Are you human spirit? Are you divine spirit? Are you carnal spirit? Are you lustful spirit? You are one of those spirits because you say you want to be born again. And you say that you've been saved, saved from what? You've been saved from Lucifer? Because it's an attribute. Have you been saved from Satan, devil, dragon, and beast? Because they are attributes. And when you look up those attributes, they are different. Some is scheming. Some is conniving. Some is hatred, some is slander, some is lewdness, some is murder, some is theft, and everything that harm. So I found that out. I found that out because I was in silent meditation. And everybody tell me, hey man, it's Friday, it's the holy day. Every day is a holy day for a holy man. And Jesus, nor Drew Ali, took a vacation. Because you can't take a vacation in this world. So I'm honored that I'm able to read to you from the book of the seven seals that none was able to open. And I'd like to give honor to Noble Drew Ali because of the book of the seven seals, because if it wasn't for him, because Rome was moving during that time. They came with the, uh, uh, unto D.I. Grant. They came with 
all other different kind of books that come out of Africa. And the books say from the east comes all light. And though the sun is hanging at high noon, the blind cannot see the light. Now let me change planes because I got a lot to talk about. Uh, last couple of weeks, we had Brother uh, Minister Manyweather uh, on the show. And this brother is of the Christian faith. This brother been through all the ways of life. He done did so much. He done did things. Uh, and he don't even know I done did everything that he done done too. Because the highest heights are gained by those who reach the greatest depth. You got to go all the way to your lowest and able to gain your highs. And this brother did that. So we was talking the other day. I went by miracle to sit down and talk to him. And in our conversation, we were talking about the last supper. We were talking about the spirit of God. How God come over us and how we got to overcome and be one with the Father. And the way that you become one with the Father is dealing with the fruits of the Spirit. Then you had two brothers that called themselves Morsh Americans. They come in the door. And the first thing they was talking about is that brother was in that white truck. The brother that was in the white truck and he had the Morsh flag hanging out there and talking about the European can't do this. And the European can't. Let me tell you something. European will crush you, man. I was in the military. See, a lot of times we put our own family in jeopardy and, and don't even know it. Let me tell you something. Drew Ali bought us that flag. And when he bought us that flag, he bought us the flag of the Moorish Science Temple of America. You have a lot of people running around with Moorish pins on and everything and talking about you ain't no citizen of this government. And you ain't a part of this government. This government ain't nothing. You want to go somewhere else, go somewhere else. Drew Ali didn't come with them instructions from Allah. Allah gave him some instructions. And the instruction that Allah gave Jew Ali to give us was the citizens of all free national governments, according to their national constitution, are all of one family bearing one free national name. Your national name is American, and your national decent name is Moorish. And the reason why Nova Jew Ali gave us them instructions from Allah, because Allah knew that, matter of fact, he knew that we had no other chance to do nothing else, and we are living now to put this spirit in the babies. That's why the books say that we will protect it in our infancy and we will protect it in our, our, our ignorance. So right now, if another uh, government came in here and took over, we'd be right back into slavery. But Jew Ali, through the infinite wisdom of Allah, gave us something and told us how to act. Now, a lot of people don't realize that in the time of the prophet, he had the right telling us, stop flashing your cards at Europeans. It causes confusion. Remember, your card is for your salvation. And that's what's transpiring today. Everybody wants see, let me tell you this too, before I talk about many weather. The prophet told us that some of his greatest followers are in the church. That's what he told us. And the reason why he told us that is because most of our brothers and sisters in the church is trying to live a moral and clean life. They're trying to live according to the fruit of the Spirit. So people keep asking me, what you doing with Miniweb? Because you already told me about him. He told me the way that he be living and the lesson that he was teaching. Because in our conversation, there are the two brothers that come in there talking about that kind of Moorish America. They talking about going to file something on the government, go beat the government up. Let me tell you something. And I'm going to tell you something, and if you don't agree with it now, you agree with it later, because I was there when it transpired. When Noah Drew Ali established the Moorish Science Temple of America in 1913 A.D., he knew that all of us was with Jesus, we were with Muhammad, we were with Buddha, or we were Confucius, and he had to tell us that he was five times greater than any other prophet that had come before him because Allah gave him something that he didn't give nobody else. And what was that? He had to bring us our nationality. No other prophet had to bring the people their nationality because everybody else had theirs. Drew Ali had to bring us two things that made us whole because three-fifths of the man, those other two-fifths made us whole. So now, we're talking to Brother Manuel. Pastor Menoweather, Minister Menoweather, good brother, good spirit, and a good vision. And in our conversation, we're talking about getting a multi-purpose building. And the, what we're going to do with this multi-purpose building is have uh, all religious persuasions being a part of it. 
And the reason why we're doing that, because the 14th chapter of St. John say, In my father's house are many mansions. And if it was not so, I would have told you. And then he said, He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. So you got to be still to hear the, the still small voice that speaks. So now, Mother Well is telling me that the, uh, the, what's that basketball team now? The Portland Trail Blazers. They needed some Asiatics to do something uh, 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 with the, 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 the basketball team. And they didn't know where to get no Asiatics was because they were 2% of us here. They didn't know. So they called him and he was able to take Asiatics there because most of everybody here that lives here and talking about the struggle of the people, you don't want to deal with your own. You got to deal with the European. You have to deal with him because you want to show off. You want to show him that you are right. You want to show him that you ain't with us. You want to show him that you just like him. The only difference is your color. So now, many weather. Minister Miller was. He did it again. He got a whole lot of Asiatic children that look just like me. He got about 20 of them together. And he took them to the park. Man, when he took them to the park, the residents in that neighborhood called the police. They called the police. They may got too many of them Negroes over in this park. We don't know what's going on. They're little babies, too. We don't know if they're getting ready to ride or what they're getting ready to do. And the, the police called him while he was in the park. He said, man, we're going to take care of this. He said, but you got people seeing a lot of y'all there. And they called him thinking that you might be protesting or something. And that's so beautiful. I heard that, and I loved it. Because it have to be something rare because you don't see that too much. Because I've never been to a cookout. I've never been to, I say cookout, I don't call it picnic. Because you know on a Sunday, during the advent of slavery, at the church, this is when they used to hang you and me up and they called it pick a nigga. They called it picnic. So I'm not going to call it picnic, but every time I went to a family gathering, you always got Asiatic and Europeans there. And they make sure that that transpired. They make sure that the so what took place, there wasn't no European involved, so they called the police. And it was the police that called the minister and say, man, we got this because we know that you are just out there demonstrating with the children, trying to uplift fallen humanity and teaching those things necessary to make our members better citizens. But if we get this multi-purpose building, then that means that we are able to dialogue and do things in the spirit. Uh, Drew Ali gave us some wisdom when he said that some of his greatest followers are in the church. Because when you begin to talk about some people other than the church, other religion, they're not going to honor Drew Ali anyway. They're not going to honor him. You know, me. I'm going to use me for example. Am I a Muslim? Yes, I am. M-O, because there's no O in the Arabic language. When you look in the Moorish Quran and see the word Muhammad, it's with an O, it's not with a U. And know what Drew Ali is teaching us. He is teaching us when he did that. Because you have to understand when you talk about Jesus, when you talk about Muhammad, when you talk about Buddha, and when you talk about Confucius, you are talking about the same reincarnated spirit. The book says whenever a nation is in need for a prophet, God will send one. And a lot of times when he sent a prophet to a particular nation, they might speak a different language. But it's the same reincarnated spirit. That's why I don't care if I raise up a million people or know somebody that call himself ill or bad to raise up a hundred thousand. You talking about reincarnation, the reincarnation, you and Jesus are one. What is his nationality? What is your nationality? You and Jesus are one, so you are real reincarnated spirit, but you're not duality. It's only one duality. It's only one Jesus. It's only one Muhammad. It's only one Buddha and Confucius. But I'm not going to play with you during the month of Ramadan and come over there because I'm in a different spirit. And I hear it said all the time, what the Moorish Americans coming over here for? Tell me they're some kind of Muslim. They know that if they say that they're Muslim, that Drew Ali ain't no Muslim. Muhammad is the last in the seal of the prophet. Surah 34, ayah, you know, Surah 33, Ayah 40. So now you want to go over there and you want to pray because it's time month of Ramadan. You messing them people around because you got that means you got to go to the holy city of Mecca. You got to go to the holy city of Mecca once in a lifetime. But you all at least say, I knew Mecca is in Chicago. So you don't go to Chicago, though. You got to go to Mecca like he said. Then you got to say, Elilah Muhammad al-Rasulullah. 
You got to bear witness that there is no God but Allah and that Muhammad is the last and the seal of the prophet. So something wrong with this picture because when I look at Buddha, when I look at Confucius, the concepts are the same, but they are different. Because in silent meditation, Jesus said, before I flow in spring, and it was a holy day. We talking about meditation. Because when you meditate, you into the spirit. Because man is not the body nor the soul. He's the spirit and a part of Allah. Let me get on something else before I get too far. I have a book here that I just got in the mail for a lot of other things. And the brother that sent me this book is Brother Sheik Benson Eel. And Benson Eel, back in around 1983-82, his son won the spelling bee contest in Washington, D.C. Man, we were so happy because he had his tie bush on, he had his Moorish apparel on, and he won the spelling bee. You don't know how happy we was. And this was back in 1982 or 83. And, man, you don't know, it was all in the D.C. or the Washington Post, the Washington Times, and we felt good. But this book is his cousin. She just wrote this book. This is her name here. And I'm going to call her phone number off before I talk about it in case you want the book. It's 202-834-3717. You can go on Facebook and got all this on there, but she is a poet. And one of the things I was looking, I haven't read the book yet, but I read the introduction. And I read something else in here that she was talking right here about the introduction. And she was talking about when she went to school. Because when we come up, our families, you know, in the Morris Sign Temple, you have sister's name is Precious. You have uh, Sincerity. You have brother's name was Elihu or, or a sister named Salome. We used to name out of the book. So her name was Sincerity. Her father named her Sincerity. So when she went to school, all her friends laughed at her. They joked at her. They made fun of her because her name was Sincerity. And she said in this introduction that she didn't realize until she grew up the blessing that she got. So I have a godson named Abdu Mathis. My brother Larry Mathis named his son after me because my name was Abdu before I joined the Morris Science Temple of America. Abdu means servant of God, not Abdul. Abdul is African. And Lumumba, and we know about Le P Patrice Lumumba. That was my name before I joined, joined the Morris Science Temple. And when Abdu used to go to school, all his friends used to laugh at him. They used to laugh at him because he had a crazy and a funny name. So I told him the other day, I said, man, I got a book that I just got from Sincerity, Benson Neal's uh, granddaughter, and she went through the same thing you went through about the name. I say, but when I had this name, I would have named you something else. I wouldn't have called myself that because what I learned about Abdu, my godson, is that what she went through, he went through it too. But through carnal thought, and words and deeds, man told himself away from Allah, he debased himself. So when I seen that, I called him and told him that. And all of the Moorish children that had those names at that time, they frowned up. But they were studying. They was in school. They was learning their lessons. And I think this is a good reading because she grew up in the Moorish Science Temple of America. See, a lot of people don't know too much about the Moorish Science Temple. And a lot of us think that the Morris Science Temple of America, you got to go down to the courthouse and you got to get your paperwork and you got to pay all this money. I tell my man Kenny, my man Kenny, he said, man, I'm not even with Bratton Bay no more because I've seen something else. I said, I told you that before because I met Noah Drew Ali's wife. I met his children. This just started in the late 70s when people started going down to the courthouse getting some paperwork. Let me tell you, Europeans don't care nothing about you written so paperwork. They're going to still look at you as a Negro, as a color, and as a black. And they still call you that. I just like recently, people getting on my nerve talking about uh, Harry Tubman. They supposed to have been her, putting Harry Tubman on the $20 bill, but now people and uh, Andrew Jackson will be taken off from knowing he had a lot of slaves. Why do you keep talking about that? Why do you keep talking about what the Europeans are doing? What we need to do is get ourselves in order. You keep running down to some courthouse. Let me tell you this. If there was a need to go down to the courthouse, Drew Ali would have did that.
And what Gerald Lee gave us the signs for, he said, how many millions of us in here? You mean everybody in America got to go down to the courthouse and get in line and go in there and say, hey, man, I want to uh, fill out my paperwork. Man, that's just money in your pocket. Because Gerald Lee said, I bought you everything that it takes to save a nation. Now take it and save yourself. So what he did, he went to the president. He went to the president and got the mandate to teach our people their nationality and their divine creed. So if Noble Drew Ali went and got the mandate, all you have to do is attend and become a member of the Morris Science Temple of America. That's all you have to do. We keep looking for one thing when something else is right there all the time. Because Drew Ali said, I can do more for you in the spirit than in the flesh. But all these brothers that I meet now, they come in the door, tell them I'm a washer man. You ain't no more. You only look like a washer man. I remember back in the 70s that we should have seen. We don't even talk about this because the public. We know about all these things just like the flag. There's things that we have, but until we come under one head like the prophet left, we can't get some things done. So we had uh, brothers that go buy furniture, go buy cars, go buy homes, go buy land or whatever you buy, but you didn't have to pay taxes on it. And what started transpiring, there was a dude named Huggy Bear. Huggy Bear was back in the 70s, and Huggy Bear had some platform shoes on. And these, these platform shoes that Huggy Bear had on, he had a fish in the middle. You know, the, the fish, anybody that's my age, you know what I'm talking about, Huggy Bear. So Huggy Bear went down to National, a uh, place where you buy your furniture at, and said, my name is Brother Eel, and my name is Brother Bay. And I'm down here with this paperwork to show you that I want to get uh, my tax free. They look, they, they, they start talking. You European say, man, that dude faking. See, because the books say follow the prophet to a destiny which is not uncertain nor unknown. You walk around here looking like Lucifer, Satan, devil, dragon, and beast, and go on in there talking about you some kind of Moorish American. If you say that you're a Moorish American, that means that you're living according to the fruits of the Spirit. You're living according to the Kalima Shahada. You're living according to love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. You're trying to learn to love instead of hate because you're trying to be what your forefathers were. Now, you got to be ever mindful. Boy, when Thompson Bay told me that, it made me feel good. He said, I was in a conversation with some people, and they was talking about the Vatican. And when they were talking about the Vatican, then they tried to use the Moorish America. But Thompson Bay, because of our great Sunday school that we have, he was able to tell that person, so you got to understand that the Vatican got the mandate from Gerard Lee. If you check the mandate of the Vatican and see what year that the Vatican was formed, it was formed after the Moorish Science Temple of America. Because they looked and seen, because Gerard Lee told us, it's for your earthly salvation. While we, the Moorish Americans, are returning to Islam, which was founded by our forefathers for our earthly and our divine salvation. So if you hit me in the head, uh, bury me in, 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 in the shadow grave, and you take on my name, then that don't mean that the Spirit of God is going to work with you with the name that you have taken on because you stole it. So it's only for your earthly salvation. You can't even see with the Spirit. Because the spirit ain't in you. And if the spirit is in you, what spirit are you? So I'm trying to live a more than clean life. You know, uh, like I, I, I said to some people the other day, my mother used to say, Lord, build me up where I am weak and strengthen me where I'm most torn down. A lot of things I used to do, I thought it was being strong but was being weak because I have caused certain things that Allah have made to suffer pain. So I wanted to share that. And I share it because you need to understand, a lot of people tell me I'm not going over here or I'm not going over there because of things that transpired. I can say the same thing. But you know what? No cross, no crown. You got to go through things in life. You got to go through trials and you got to go through tribulations. And once you do that, then you have a lesson you can see now. Because many have eyes to see but can't see. You think you can see and many have ears to hear but can't hear, but at least you could be concerned about your sins. And this is what the prophet Noah Drew Ali brought to us. Now, there was a brother that was on the video. A lot of times I get these videos, what I do is I send them to our members because I want them to look at it. But this was beautiful because there was a brother out of Temple Number 4 in Detroit. Say he'd been around 40 years. And 
Detroit's a good place. That's where uh, a lot of people used to be up there, especially Parker Bay. And the National Secretary used to live right up there in Mount Clemens, Michigan. And uh, in our conversations, he was talking about uh, Arab Islam and African Islam. And I remember the lesson that was taught to us. Say, when you was talking about Africa, you know, there was a time in certain parts of Africa, the child was named after the mother and not the father. So the dude said, man, I don't know why that happened. It should be named after the father. I said, I ain't got nothing to say about that. I said, if that was the custom at that time, it must be some foolishness that were going on. Because when I grew up, they say, Papa's baby or Mama's baby. Papa's maybe. I don't know what the sheiks over there did that, but there was a time. So when you begin to talk about Africa, and when you begin to talk about Arabia, there's a difference. When Drew Ali went to talk to the people in the holy city of Mecca, he went and said, he said, I'm claiming the seed of Abraham. They said, give me back what's mine. They thought the prophet was talking about something tangible. But he was talking about the mind of my people. When I first joined the Morris Sign Temple, there were some books that we was required to read. And these books that we were required to read, one of them was about Morocco. And when you looked at the original people in Morocco, they looked just like me. When you looked at the original Arabians, they looked just like me. But the Arabians today, the Moroccans today, they're French, they're Spanish, they're German, they're Dutch, they Portuguese, and that what keeps you from having a nationality because everybody have a nationality except you, even dogs. I say that all the time. Dogs have a nationality. You have German shepherds, you have Irish sellers, you have Mexican chihuahuas, and they have a nationality. They got their paperwork, and they come from a geographical location because the law, in his infinite wisdom, gave every nation on earth a geographical location on which they can trace themselves back. I got family now in Nigeria because both of my daughters married brothers out of Nigeria. I know some people from Sierra Leone and a lot of other places, and when they're over here in America, you know what they call themselves? They call themselves black. they disrespecting their father and mother because when they say, honor oh, that father and that mother, that their days may be longer upon the earthland which the Lord thy God Allah has given thee. Your father is the great God Allah. That's why so many times I hear brothers talking about Drew Ali is the father. Even the old sisters in the days of the prophet, they call him brother prophet. And Jesus and Drew Ali say in the more show the Quran, say, I'm your brother man. Just come to show the way to Allah. Don't praise me. Praise Allah, the Holy One. So when we begin to talk about Drew Ali, Drew Ali is the prophet. He is not Allah. Allah is the father of the universe and the father of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. That's what our literature tells us. And if our literature tells us that, you want to take Jew Ali and make him the father. So that means that if you make Jew Ali the father, then where is Allah? Allah don't exist. Because Allah has to exist in you. Because you spell Allah, A-L-L-A-H, and that's only two arms, two legs, and one head. And within your spirit, Allah live. You can tell if Allah live. That's why we talk so often here at Temple 2 about chapter 6. And talking about when you first saw Jesus, he was climbing up a ladder. And he had three things in his hand, and which was the compass, the square, and the axe. And we use the compass to draw a circle around our passions and our desires to keep them in the bounds of righteousness. We use the square to measure all our lines to straighten out the crooked places of the way, to make the corners of our conduct square. I had a lot of crooked places in my life. I done done so much, I don't know what I'm still doing when I had a birthday the other day. I don't know why I lost still got me here. But evidently my good must outweigh my bad. And that he must favor me somewhere to keep me here. And I'm almost 70. And I'm looking at it, and I'm thanking Allah for the blessing. So right here I have something. It talks about Temple 4 again. And you need to understand that when you begin to talk about Islam, certain people practiced it according to the concepts and the ideologies of their nation of people. Uh, in this studio here, we have uh, Arabs that come in. They are Christians. They're in the Arab faith. They come in, and they have their service. But they're Christians. 
and they named this Abdullah. Their name is Muhammad. And I asked one of them, I said, man, you a Christian. And you around here calling yourself Yusuf. And you around here calling yourself Allah. I mean, Ali. He said, man, I don't have anything to do with my religion. There's no such thing as a Muslim name. He said, we take on these names. But before Muhammad got the revelation from God, what was his name? Before Utma, Ali, and Abu Bakr, before they uh, before Muhammad got the revelation, they had those names. So these are Arabian names. So I shut up and humble myself. So I said, well, I'm going to start using Abdu. And I'm going to start using Lamuma because both of these are African. But in the literature that Drew Ali gave us, just like on the back of here, it said Mille Eel, Small Bay, Lovett Bay, and Formant Bay. And the reason why he said that because uh, my friend Nabi, Nabi Bay, I was up there seeing him this morning. He told me, he said, man, I might stop calling myself Nabi. He said, because every time I call myself Nabi, they might think I'm Ben Laden. That's only on a certain level because they know Bin Laden was the CIA working with the government. And the bad part about that, my daughter's mother. She was in the Pentagon when they blew it up. She just happened to be on the other side. And I was on a weight pile in the, in the devil crypt. And I said to myself, boy, if I can catch this chump, Bin Laden, I said, I'll whip this chump because this chump just did this to my family. He don't care nothing about us as an Asiatics. He don't do that and then some other stuff that, that go with that. So we are on another different plane. When we begin to understand that the Arabs was one of the first ones to try to put us into slavery. We don't know what that is. You don't know your genealogy. I read this book just now and told you about the sister. The sister that wrote the book. So when I tell you about the sister, I told you about her introduction. But you yet to tell me who James Stewart was. The one that you call King James. And you keep jumping on that. We've been, we're dealing with what is now and not what seemed to be. I'm not going to blame nobody else for my misfortune. Because in the National Security Force that we had, our motto was the prevention of sin and crime. And in this verse that I just read in the Holy Quran, talking about chapter 17, Jesus taught. Europeans and made him his ambassador to Rome. Now you run around here telling me you some kind of Moorish American. You doing things that diametrically opposed to what God say. And now you find a European that's in the church, that's living a more than clean life, that's trying to do right. Then what? Because you got to understand the only reason why Martin Luther King was so great, because he had those that had their collars turned around backwards, working with him, dealing with civil rights. But we know in the Morris Science Temple of America, that if there's a civil right and if there's a human right, then I got to be with the human right because man become human when he took on form and pigmentation. And when you begin to talk about civil rights, civil rights is a granted privilege. It's a non-political issue. Civil rights is not even an issue that you could take before the United Nations. We talked about this before. There was a brother by the name of you thought and Malcolm wanted to go to the UN to talk to you thought. And he told you thought, said, man, we're going to bring the United States before the world court and charge genocide. You thought, said, Malcolm, you're a bad brother. You're one of the baddest brothers in America. But in order to take the United States before the world court, you must represent a nation. And we already have a representative for the United States. What nation do you represent? I represent the black man. Said, Come on, Malcolm. You're a little more intelligent than that. And looking at your age. Because everybody that's the age that I am, everybody that from 65 to 70, I'm just using you. I ain't going to use nobody else. You know that when we went to school, if somebody called you black, you better know how to fight. And in the Morris Science Temple back in the 60s and the 70s, when we used to fly that American flag, they said, man, what's wrong with them Morris over there, man? They flying the flag, but Drew Ali had to use a methodology that was conducive to the growth and development of us to save us from the wrath of Allah, and he did it by teaching us to be ourselves. He told us about nationality. He told us about divine creed. When he went and retrieved that flag from Woodrow Wilson, Woodrow Wilson said, man, all that stuff we done put in y'all, 
We know that your people won't do anything about finding the knowledge of himself. He said, instead of bringing me 100,000, just bring me 50. And 100,000 stood up. In the time of Chicago, there were so many more Americans. We're talking about nationality. We're not talking about hate. We're not talking about slander. We don't have to go down to no government, to the, to the courthouse, and file no paperwork. You don't do that because Drew Ali already done it. Drew Ali bought the flag, and it's disrespectful. It's disrespectful to the Morris Science Temple of America for somebody to put them flags outside your window, ride them down the street. The Morris Science Temple been there since 1913. I've been in the temple almost 50 years myself. Well, I learned about the prophet almost 50 years because I had to go through trials and tribulations too. Now, let me tell you about the old, the second generation. They done went through trials and tribulations. We did all kind of things under the sun, just like the Christians and just like everybody else. So you say, this brother did this, or this sister did that. Yeah, but this is the Morris Science Temple. And then the Morris Science Temple of America, every round gets higher and higher. The thing that you overcame, it's because you labored for your reward. We got to let this stuff go. And when you begin to let it go, then you can see your principle of peace come in. Drew Ali taught us about peace, peacefulness, a peace of mind. That's our principle. One of our principles is peace. And we're trying to love our brothers and sisters that they live in peace, have freedom, and justice will come to us all. And what is justice? Justice is dealing upright, equal, and fair. This fair as I have on, it don't have anything to do with death. Because we know black according to science means death. When you go in the courtroom and you see a judge, and the judge have a, a black robe on, it symbolizes justice. So I want to tell you something about justice. Everywhere I go now, I hear everybody talking about they want to wear a red flaming sword. Because there are people now that don't want to admit that Nova Drew Ali wore black fez and he took his fez off and put it on one of the cook bay's heads. So if that's the case, why ain't nobody wearing it today? Because you know that you are living according to Lucifer, Satan, devil, dragon, and beast. And because you are living that attribute, it's fear. Fear proclaim it. You fear the justice that's going to come upon you. And I'm honored that I'm wearing one because when the call is out, I'm coming to see you, man. Because what you're doing, you're making you out. He said, I've suffered much and severely in the past through misunderstanding of what the movement was dedicated to. So going down to the courthouse, that has nothing to do with the Morris Science Temple of America and Nova Drew Ali. And you really don't have a right to fly the flag because Drew Ali gave the flag to the members of the Morris Science Temple of America. He gave you that. And you have both of them in the and you can't fly one without the other. He told us that too. You find a lot of them just flying one flag, but you got to honor the American flag. Because that flag protected us. We know what our history is. I got so many stripes on my back, and I got more than a lot of you. Because I was living when we couldn't go to the counters and sit down on the counter and eat. I was living when J. Edgar Hoover was killing all the Black Panthers all across the country, and I see it on the 6 o'clock news. I was living when Martin Luther King and them went through what they went through. I wasn't living, though, when Martin, the NAACP told the, the European, I don't know what's wrong with Drew Ali. Drew Ali telling the people they're not Christian. And Drew Ali telling the people that they're some kind of Muslim or Muslim. We don't know what's wrong with that. But the government honored it because it was uh, the government they gave Jew Ali the permission to teach the Quran. That's why I say we derive our power and authority from the great Quran. Of my why? Because it's ours. When you hear somebody talking about Jesus, when you hear somebody talking about uh, Mary and Joseph, I was in a conversation uh, this morning. And when you and all of you in the church, you don't even know who Anna is. And you don't even know who Joaquin is. The only time you eat some stuff and, 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 and the Masons know about uh, Joaquin and, 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 and Anna in them is when you're in your particular order. And they don't teach that in church. Nobody I know can really remember in church what they said about Anna. And her husband is Joaquin. And Joaquin is the two pillars of, 
of the Masonic Order, the two pillars are Jockman and Boaz. And Drew Ali gave us some signs. He said, Boaz by Ruth and Joseph by Mary. So there was a time when we came through the door through the woman. See, because the Moabites was a no good people. We were doing everything that was diametrically opposed to what God said. But Ruth had a husband. And her husband died. And Naomi and all of them were together, and they was talking. And then the boy had looked at my girl over there fine, man. Who's that name, Ruth? Man, I put a T on her name because that girl ain't nothing but the truth. So he pulled her. He pulled Ruth because she's seen principles in his life. So they started dating, then they got married. And when they got married, they had some children. And then when they had some children, you hear names like Jesse. You hear names like Obed. You hear names like David. You hear names like Solomon. And just this morning, we got to reiterate that. Everybody want to talk about David and Solomon, and everybody want to say Jesus is the Lord. But man is the Lord of this plane of things made manifest. When Solomon and David wrote the song. Jesus wasn't even born yet. I got to keep saying that because we keep looking at it different. You know, we are taught to look at it one way. I got a daughter. She went to Howard University. I got two daughters. Both of them got college degrees. But one of my daughters went to Howard a couple of times. And my daughter went to Howard. She got a master's degree. And I got a master's degree too. Because Professor Drew of the Egyptian Adapt, he raised me up. And he taught me, and he gave me my certificate. My daughter, she got hers too. She got her master's degree and came from the European, even though Howard University is an Asiatic school, but the concepts in there and the teachings are the same. So we both got master's degrees. But I mastered mine just like she mastered hers. So now I'm a master. And everything that I'm telling you is something that I'm mastering. I'm mastering myself. I'm trying to rule myself. I'm trying to govern myself. I tell myself, you know, let's go to the bathroom. Then I thought, then we go. Everything you see comes from thought. In the beginning was the thought. In the beginning was not the word. Man thought the word. So what we have to do, your thoughts is what gets you close to God, and your thoughts is what separates you from God. Because through carnal thoughts and words and deeds, man tore himself away from Allah. He debased himself. So what you Ali did, he came and told us about a moral and clean life. You know, just like that brother the other day. Man, you all, he told us, don't use profanity, even in the mildest form. And when you get on social media or anywhere and talk about you Morse American and that's your flag and you get the cussing of Europeans out, man, that takes away from what we've been doing all these years. We've been working. We've been holding up this blood stain back. You don't realize we can't go to Saudi Arabia and ask for no Qurans. We got to buy them on our own, like a lot of other religions, Islamic religions do, because they're not going to give us no Holy Quran or Mecca. And you know they're not going to give you no Moorish Holy Quran because Jew Ali ain't a prophet. Jew Ali is not the prophet. Muhammad is the last and the seal of the prophet because we went through the advent of slavery and we fell, then we ain't got nothing coming. The book do say whatever nation is in need for a prophet, the law will send one, but you so hung up in some illusions, we don't even see that. We don't see them now. If, 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 if uh, nationality was not taken away from us, then we might not have needed Noah Jew Ali because we already had the religion. But because Jew Ali had to come and through the Berlin Conference, let's look at this again. Through the Berlin Conference, the Europeans said so they're still working. We don't even realize it. They're still working every day. They're growing every day, and they're locking in every day. And what I see here in America, we have become woven. In here is known as the Great Melting Pot. And this Great Melting Pot deals with many different nationalities. But somebody's going to win. Somebody's going to win, and we're going to start acting like them. They ain't acting Moorish, because we ain't teaching Moorish. They ain't acting like none of that that you all he told us to act like, but we begin to act like them. I got a sister. I got a brother. I got a cousin. I got a nephew. I got some friends. And say that if my friends was going against what uh, 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 Haram son, uh, Lot, Lot, and you know is Abraham's nephew, and Lot 
had a lesson that he was teaching. But now we have become woven into that thought pattern. We accepting it. Jesus said, if my mother ain't right, she can't get into the kingdom of heaven. So now we're dealing with feelings and we're dealing with emotion. And when you deal with feelings and emotion, you can't deal with reason and logic. But I got a blessing one day right here in this studio. That's why I like to give the people here an open signal honor. Because I was told one day, said Lynch Bay, we understand now that different people or different nations have different concepts about a lot of different things. And whenever I come on here and talk about nationality, whenever I come on here and talk about the slave trade, then a lot of people, why he keep talking about that? That happened 400 years ago because our people still don't see it. When you begin to talk about being in mental slavery, that is a mindset. And Drew Ali talked about mental slavery, which you now have. And he said, we need each and every one of you who think that your conditions can be better. And the only way that your conditions can be better is to join the more assigned Temple of America. Because nowhere else will you find those that hook you right back up with the families of nations. What is your nationality? My nationality is Moorish American. Why are you Moorish American? Because we are descendants of Moroccans and born in America. Who are these Moroccans? They are the descendants of the ancient Moabites who inhabited the northwestern and southwestern shores of Africa. Now, who are these Moabites? They're the biblical sons and daughters of Ham. One of the three sons of Noah, according to the biblical scriptures. And this is why we are hermetic by descent nature, by the way of Lot. Now, Lot is the son of Haran. Haran, Nan, Abel is the son of Tira. Tira is the son of Reu. Reu is the son of Pila. Peter is the son of Ebal. Ebal is the son of Salem. Salem is the son of Factor. And Factor is the son of Shem. And Noah had three sons, Ham, Shem, and Japheth. Not Shem, Ham, and Japheth, because that's where James Stewart, King James, changed some things around. So I'm always honored to be able to come before our Portland listening audience to talk to you about the last prophet in these days and times. And I'd like to give honor to Brother Hassan that's working the show. I'd like to give honor to him because that brother, he reminds me of Menweather, the minister. And what I mean by that is because they're trying to learn to love instead of hate. They're not into this religion just to be all right with somebody or they didn't come in because their buddy is in it. They came in because they knew that the nearest place to meet God was within themselves. So in conclusion... I would like to say that ye are the children of one father, provided for by his care, and the breast of one mother has given ye suck, that the bonds of affection therefore unite thee with thy brother, that peace and happiness may dwell in thy father's house. Allah, the father of the universe, the father of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, Allah is my protector, my God, and my salvation, by night and by day, through his holy prophet, Drew Ali. Amen.